So before we get started, I just want to let you guys know, I just finished shooting this entire video, then I realized my audio recorder's battery had died, so I had no audio, and this is take two of this entire shoot, so bear with me. So most people don't know the difference between a modem and a router. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the difference between the two, but we're also going to talk about the difference between a Wi-Fi router, a range extender, and Wi-Fi mesh system. Don't worry, we're not going to get too technical. This is just a beginner's and simple video, so you will be able to simply follow along so that way you can make a decision to see what you need to get for your home. Also in this video, we're going to go ahead and review a mesh uh, network system by MeshForce that was sent to me. We're going to go ahead and talk about the features, pros, cons, and I'm going to give you giveaway instruction to win one of these units brand new. But before we get started, my name is Sean. I run this tech channel where I do uh, tech reviews, unboxing, and tutorials. So if you like content like this, you will want to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification so you won't miss my future videos. And if you happen to like this video, the best thing you can do to support me, just hit that like button and that's all you need to do. So first, let's talk about a modem and what it does. So I'm gonna use my son's whiteboard so I can illustrate some of the points about um, what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to get across. So let's imagine this cloud is the internet. All the signals on the internet typically are analog. The problem is in your house, Pretty much most devices in your network, they understand digital signal, not analog. Right? So that's why you need a modem to be able to modulate and demodulate the signal going back and forth from the internet and to your house. And this is a modem. So a modem would modulate the digital signal to analog so you can send it to the internet and it will demodulate the signal analog signal coming from the internet to digital signal back into your home network so your devices can talk to one another and that's where the name modem comes in place modulator demodulator that's basically it so this is the extent of what we need to understand and talk about about modems. The only other thing I want to let you know is when you rent your equipment from your internet service provider, typically that unit that you rent for 11, 15 or 16 bucks a month, that is a combo modem and Wi-Fi router into one device. So if you do want to buy your own unit to the point that you're not paying any uh, rental uh, fees to uh, your internet service provider, then you may need to buy a modem and a router. But in this video, we're gonna primarily focus and talk about router options in your house. So that way you know what you need to get and what you need to do to have a nice even coverage inside your home. So first, let's talk about um, a Wi-Fi router. This is the most common device that almost everybody is familiar with, at least they've either heard of them or they've seen them at Best Buy or in your house. They're typically Traditionally, they are kind of like a flat rectangle uh, piece of device with one, two, four, or some uh, recently maybe even six or eight antennas. So a router, simply what it will do, it would route the signal that it will get from your modem into multiple devices. So in theory, if you only have one device you want to connect to internet, you don't even need a router. You can directly connect that to the modem a router will get that signal and would route it into multiple devices. And we're not gonna get too technical. Technically, there is a switch and an access point inside the router, but I promise we're not gonna get too technical in here. But just know that a router will get that signal and route it into multiple devices, whether you want to directly connect it with cable or you want to use the broadcast signal inside your house. A router simply will broadcast the signal from wherever it's located. That's why it's recommended to try to put uh, the Wi-Fi router somewhere centrally located inside your house. But the problem is many of us may not have the luxury of choosing where we want to have our router. For example, in my house, 
the only place I can plug in my router because that's where the signal comes in and the Verizon equipments are is in my basement in my garage. So where I have this on the first floor, third floor where my studio is, I get the weakest signal because of the distance and the number of floors and walls that the signal needs to penetrate to try to get to this point. And then this is where Wi-Fi range extenders will come in place. A range extender, basically, it does exactly what you think it does. It would extend the range. The way it works is you typically want to place your range extender somewhere in the middle where you're still getting decent uh, coverage and it will create its own uh, Wi-Fi network and start broadcasting signal from this point on. One of the downside of using a Wi-Fi range extender is you would typically create a second network inside your house so you cannot seamlessly roam around the house and have a nice coverage. You need to manually choose in your setting, in your Wi-Fi setting, which network you want to connect to, to the router or to the range extender. The advantage of a range extender is they're typically very price sufficient. Normally you can get them under uh, 50 or even $40 depending on the brand and the deal that you're able to get. But then this is where a mesh network will come in place. You see, mesh network systems will uh, take the best of everything you see from range extenders and the router, and then everything that is typically wrong with them is gonna try to fix those things. And that's why it's so beautiful. If you can't afford to get a mesh uh, network, you should go ahead and consider getting one. Let's talk about it. A mesh network, or a mesh system, typically comes in in multiple nodes. So this system, Mesh Force M3, it comes with three different nodes. You're able to get them with two, and you can also extend this uh, system up to six nodes, which will be a monster coverage, but we're gonna talk about that. So in my situation, so like I said, I'm in a three-story house, right? So I put the first unit down in the first floor, then I have the option to try to put the second unit on the second floor and third unit on the third floor. But most of my devices, my TVs, my some of my smart appliances, or where I will be just simply chilling and hanging out, being on my phone, on my tablet, on my MacBook Pro editing, typically it's all happening on the second floor. So I decided to put two nodes on the two ends of the house. Now keep in mind, each of these nodes is broadcasting its own signal. So this is broadcasting signal, this is broadcasting signal, and so does this node. This mesh network has a feature you can activate that would let the system decide seamlessly in the background which node you need to connect to. So if my phone is connected to the network, which by the way, it's one network, not three, so you just connect to one network, and the system in the background will decide which node you need to connect to for the most optimum uh, connection as far as reliability and speed. And this is why it's so beautiful to try to have a mesh network. You get typically a very consistent speed throughout the entire house. In my situation, I have been testing this for a couple of days right now before I do the video. Typically, that's what I do. So that way I can actually talk about the reliability of the system. Yes, two days may not be enough, but I've experienced it enough that I can at least talk about some of the features and the speeds and reliability I'm getting. So uh, best case scenario, I was getting about 150 megabits per second and worst case scenario, I got about 75. But for the most part, consistently, I was getting around 100 megabits per second, whether I used fast.com or speedtest.net. And both of them were giving me very similar uh, ranges. And having around 100 megabits per second in a 3,000 square foot house consistently, doesn't matter where I'm at, that's really the experience you're gonna get with this device. Now, that doesn't mean this does not have its own um, opportunities, and we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons, but first I wanted to explain what does a mesh system will do. Um, mesh networks uh, typically are very pricey. This is one of the budget options. You can get this around 150 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. You can get this in white and black. I'll put the link down in the description so you guys can check out the options and latest pricing available at the time you're watching this video. And continue to watch the video um, for the giveaway instruction, which I will share later on uh, at the end. So now that we know how does a mesh uh, network differs from 
a regular router or using a Wi-Fi range extender to take care of your dead spots inside your house. Let's talk about this particular unit. Like I said, this was sent to me for free. However, I'm not being paid to review this, so I'll give you my honest opinion. This is a sealed unit. I'm not gonna open this one up because I want to give this away. I do have, however, another unit that I have been testing. So I unplugged one of the nodes so I can show you in this video and we're gonna talk about this a little bit. First, let's talk about the design. This is a minimalist approach for a node so it does not have those kind of like gaming, you know, crazy looking colors and edges and uh, antennas. It is a very, very simple design. At the top, you see this kind of like shiny uh, edge. You think it's an LED, but it's not. It's just for the look. In the back, this is where you have your ports. You have a reset button, which is one of those pinholes. You have your power um, uh, adapter plug, which you get three uh, power adapter and you get three nodes and one data cable. And then this has, in every single one of the nodes you get, you have a gigabit WAN and gigabit LAN uh, port. What that means is, if you have wired network inside your house, you can go ahead, connect these with wired into different points of the house to get the fastest speed into these nodes and then they will broadcast the signal. So no matter where you're roaming in the house, you're gonna have a fast signal. If that didn't make sense, don't worry about it. Many people don't have any wired network uh, inside their homes. So most people will simply go ahead, uh, connect this uh, wirelessly, which is a very, very, very simple setup process. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So past its design, let's talk about the setup. The setup is, like I said, super simple. You have to download the Mesh Force app and the owner's manual, the quick guide. It is super, super easy to follow along. Uh, it has colorful pictures and steps are easily marked. Step one, two, three, four. Just follow those along and you will not go wrong. They do have a good support system. You can definitely email them if you get stuck or just comment down below. If I get to your comment, I will see how I can help out. So first, download the app. Next, you need to go ahead, plug any of the three. So there is no master uh, unit. They all can act as masters. So just randomly select one of the nodes plug it into the wall, uh, to the wall, and then use the data cable that is provided and connect uh, this to the modem so the signal will come into this. Once you've done that, you need to go to your setting on your phone and look up the name of the network and password at the bottom of your unit and simply connect to that network. Once that is done, get back in the app and just follow the steps and it's super easy. I do wanna fire up the app and show you some of the features. All right, so this is the My Mesh app. As you can see, you will see that red node. This is uh, this one that I have unplugged. So it gives you a really nice visual representation of your nodes and your network. So that way you can see what's going on if you need to troubleshoot. But here's the exciting part. At the bottom right, if you click on settings, this is where uh, you have access to all the features. Now, if you are a power user, you would appreciate some of the things that, is, that are available here. And if you're not a power user, there's still a couple of things that I think it's important if you do get this device to go ahead, turn those features on to try to help you a little bit more. But nonetheless, I'm just gonna briefly breeze over some of these features. So at the top, wireless setting, this is where you set the name of your network and the password. Guest network, you simply can switch it on and off. By the way, one thing about this uh, system is it will combine your 2.4 and five gigahertz a band into one network. So you no longer need to decide in your uh, list of available networks to connect to see whether you should connect to the 5.0 or 2.4. The system will make that determination for you. Five gigahertz is a lot faster, but it has a shorter range and it cannot penetrate its wall as well. And 2.4 gives you a little bit lower speed, but it can travel much further. So if you're gonna be at the end of your backyard, the system may decide that we'll need to switch you to a 2.4 uh, band instead of a five gigahertz band. So that way you can at least have a reliable connection throughout the entire um, roaming experience you have around the house. Next, we get to parental control. And uh, this is pretty cool. So you can go ahead, uh, set a test group or, uh, sorry, you can go ahead, set 
uh, set a uh, set a group, and then in that group you can go ahead um, decide which devices can or cannot access the network. So if they have connected and they're connected to the network at that moment, you can simply go ahead select that device and they are added to that network. And once that's done, you can go ahead um, select which uh, time of the day and which days of the week you don't want them to have access to the device. I give you one scenario. So let's say you don't want your kid to have access to internet on the iPad they're using after 9 p.m. all the way until let's say 7 a.m. So they're not gonna be tempted to stay up uh, when they go to bed and be on the internet or play games that would require for them to interact with, uh, with their friends. So this is how you'll be able to set that up. I will tell you one thing I really, really, really appreciate that all these features for most uh, Wi-Fi networks, whether you get a router or a mesh system, you have to typically log into a web portal. Uh, you go to, you type in uh, an IP address in the, your browser, in your computer, not on your phone, and then you have access to some of these features. So the fact that at the convenience of an app in your phone, you can have access to all these features, it is probably one of the best features of this, um, this device. Uh, next, uh, let's get to internet settings. This is your connection type, DHCP. You probably wanna leave that alone. If you're a power user, you know what that is, so we're not gonna get into that. Uh, quality of service, this is one thing I do recommend if you want to turn it on. What this will do is it will determine which devices may need to have a little bit um, uh, better and priority access to the bandwidth of your network. So for example, my Philips Hue light back here, it may need very, very, very little bandwidth access and it doesn't need a high priority, but if I'm streaming a movie on my um, Apple TV, the system will determine that that needs a higher priority because the amount of data and the frequency that it's using. So it will do all that seamlessly in the background so that way you, you would have the best uh, experience out of all your devices. So this by default is off, you can go ahead and turn this on. And then like I said, you can add uh, up to six nodes. So if you want to add additional nodes, you can add it right here. Fast roaming is another feature that I recommend for you to turn on. Again, depending on the devices uh, that you have, this may or may not uh, really work, but if you have newer devices, you should be fine. So when you turn this on, this is where the system will decide which node to connect to inside the house as you're roaming around based on how many devices are connected to each of those nodes, uh, what type of bandwidth each of them uh, are using, and so on and so forth. So uh, overall, you should have a much better experience as an end user if this is turned on. Uh, other than that, you get to some of the other features such as port forwarding, if you wanna set up DHCP server, change your DNS, and you can also check for firmware uh, upgrades over the air for your nodes as well. So this was it, guys. Um, as far as this particular device, um, I think for around 150 bucks, you get a lot. Um, if you can afford to get a mesh system, it's definitely worth it. It's typically better than any router you can get for most users. It may not be suitable for all users, but for most users, a mesh system will be a very, very convenient setup because it gets rid of the dead zones and you get a consistent speed throughout the entire house. Um, there are a lot I like about this system. I personally like the design, a very minimalist approach. I like uh, the app that they offer that I have access to um, uh, some semi-power user features uh, just from the fingertip, uh, from my fingertip in the app, in the phone versus logging into a computer to a web portal. There's only one I wish I have, and that is uh, I wish this had Wi-Fi 6 support instead of Wi-Fi 5. Now, Wi-Fi 6 is the latest um, uh, set of Wi-Fi protocols that is out there. It has some efficiency, especially if you have a crowded house and you have a lot of people connecting to your Wi-Fi and with uh, multi-user, multiple input, multiple output support up to eight devices, uh, as well as uh, some other advanced features that would uh, provide a lot of added efficiencies for uh, very crowded networks. But if this had Wi-Fi 6, I am highly confident we would not be able to get it for around 150 bucks. So 
you got you get what you pay for, right? But I am excited and I cannot wait for the day that I will be able to test a mesh system that is Wi-Fi 6 and we will see what's going to be the price point for that. But for 150 bucks, this is absolutely fantastic. I have decided to set this as my daily driver inside my house. So I'll be using this for a while. So if you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below. As always, if you have any feedback for me uh, about how I can improve my content, what other devices you want me to test, definitely let me know. If there is anything about this device or this setup I missed or my early explanation, I'm, I'm sure someone's gonna fact check whatever I said. Typically someone makes a comment about a mistake I make. I appreciate all the feedback. Everything's welcome. That's how I can get better. So uh, we're gonna grow together as a community. And as of this morning, we have crossed 5,000 subscribers, which is a humbling experience. And I cannot thank you enough, every single one of you who have subscribed and you're helping me grow this channel. Let's talk about the giveaway. Uh, so the giveaway instruction is super, super simple. All you have to do is obviously subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel and make sure you have liked this video and you need to follow me on Instagram, link down below. Now, down here, you need to comment your favorite actor and in Instagram, you need to send me a DM. All you need to say is MeshForce, the name of this company. Do those couple of steps and in about a month, I will randomly select um, uh, one of you guys. I can only ship in the US. Hopefully you understand, I have to ship this out of my pocket. Uh, I'm paying for this to at least get shipped. Uh, so hopefully you understand, I can only ship in the US right now. But I appreciate everyone's support. I have a lot of viewers from, from Canada, Mexico, UK, India. So shout outs to all you guys for your continued support. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. I appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next one. And my audio is still recording.